<laughs> Hello, world. Welcome back to D and D Beyond Live. Uh, I'm Joe Starr. I am the senior, senior, eh, man, junior. I don't know. Uh, I'm the content manager here at D and D Beyond and Phantom Tabletop. Uh, I make the stuff. I'm in charge of making the stuff. Uh, thank you guys again for joining me. I'm rolling solo this week uh, because, uh, you know, selfishly, uh, Melly's a very good co-host, and I think she overshadows me just a little bit, and I was starting to get a little jealous, so out the door she goes. I'm kidding. She's very, very busy uh, doing her much more important job than mine, and she's doing it very, very very well. Again, thank you guys for being here. Um, uh, when you last joined us, on D&D Beyond Live, uh, we started building a town together. We started building what started off as a starter town, but you guys sort of made it so insane so immediately. I don't know if it's a starter town anymore. Uh, when it's all said and done, this might be a town you shouldn't go to until you're level 10, maybe 15. I don't know, there's a Mind Flayer T-Rex in it. Um, so, uh, Turbo KKV, I want Melly as well. Uh, but she's, she, you know, there's only there's only one of her. There's only, there's only so much to go around. You guys are gonna have to settle for me. I apologize for that. Uh, something I tell people almost every day. So again, uh, when when we last left the town, you guys have created uh, this town that I want to welcome you back to because we're gonna keep fleshing this place out. This is our part two of let's build a starter town. If you missed part one. Don't worry about it. Stay glued right there. You'll be able to jump in really, really quick. And then after the stream, if you want, go check out the VOD. Um, we've been building this really cool, fun, kind of ridiculous place together. Um, and then when it's all said and done, I'll figure out a fun place for a PDF uh, with all of this to, to live so that all of you guys can have it. Because I, I, I desperately want you to, to throw a game in here and, uh, and, and see what happens and see how it goes um is my hair slightly reddish eh, but the, it's the la sun just uh there's no ozone i think above los angeles so it just it's scalding what you're what you're seeing is the sun burning me in real time my hair's uh not reddish um just uh just burning from the surface of the sun so to review you guys uh we we invented this place called Tarmonia Village, or at least it's called Tarmonia Village now. It used to be called Blood Gorge until this um, this very like well-meaning cleric, you know, rode in um, a man with no name style and decided to clean the place up. Uh, and you, I guess she she accomplished it more or less. Uh, it's it's not a it's not a pleasant place. It's not a safe place. Uh, but the, this this cleric uh, named Portia uh, has has come in and sort of done her best to clean this place up. But she's also sort of imposed a little bit of her will uh, uh, on the town. You know, sort of incorporating uh, some of the religious side of uh, of being a cleric or a paladin uh, has has come with Portia. She's sort of imposed uh, some some ideas on this town, including renaming it uh, Tarmonia Village. Uh, let me tell you guys a little bit um, about this place. And and you know what, by the way, as we get in, I apologize. Um, uh, uh, I'm very self-deprecating. Uh, it's just me in instinctually, uh, you know, survival tactic from being, uh, from, from being a young nerd. I'm fairly confident. I, I feel pretty good about myself. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just a fun place to go. So I appreciate you guys so much always telling me to shut up when I'm mean to myself on camera. I really, really honestly do appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Um, let me jump into this place with you guys. It's sort of like a, it's in the middle of a, just a wasteland, kind of a desert. Um, uh, it's, it's in that there's like this cracked earth area where there's this huge canyon uh, and the city is mostly underground in the canyon and then built up along uh, side uh, the walls. Uh, part of me envisions, you know, ruins you might find in, in uh, New Mexico uh, or Arizona sort of built up uh, the sides of these places. Um, our starter in, again, you know, we talked about last time, probably the most important building that you can put in your starter town is that in that's that, that's where folks are probably going to beeline um you know that's where the quest board usually is that's where the very helpful innkeeper with all with the know-how and uh, of the town is that's where all your weird npcs are usually hanging out um uh, a lot of my favorite dungeons and dragons stories start in that inn you know both 
within the campaign. Uh, famously, uh, Critical Role, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard of that show, but it's a, it's a fun little indie and you should definitely check it out if you get a chance. I think they've put it out on Criterion. Uh, you know, the Mighty Nines campaign started in an end. Uh, Dragonlance, the thing that really got me in, to, that really hooked me into fantasy. Obviously, I, I read Lord of the Rings and stuff, but Dragonlance starts in that end. And they call back to that starter in all the time in Dragonlance. Uh, we can go out through the kitchen, right? So um, we have a great end uh, that you guys put together. Uh, in this place. It's called Dry Gulch Springs slash Scale and Ale. It's a hybrid, which I appreciate as a person who has traveled this country uh, and seen many a truck stop. That's a truck stop slash an Arby's or a truck stop slash a Domino. So you guys created this hot sulfur springs slash a tavern, which I absolutely adore. It's run by um, an old, just like a leathery old woman called Granny Rex, uh, who maybe not necessarily evil, but not necessarily good. Definitely looking out for herself. Definitely has her own game going. Uh, and she has an imp assistant. There's a cobalt bouncer. Uh, she has a Kenku singer, uh, which named Juke, uh, who has just, you know, overheard snippets of, uh, of different songs throughout their life. So you have that Kenku singer uh, uh, doing that back. Um, uh, there's an ex-mercenary that, that's a regular uh, at the tavern. Uh, and then there's a, 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 a Dompier and a Minotaur uh, work in the kitchen. I don't know how that works exactly, but the Minotaur is very, very like Gordon Ramsay. Um, they themselves are, are their own comedy series that I would absolutely love to see. Uh, beyond the area, the sort of starter area, beyond the town, uh, the second most important thing that I think you can make a decision about with your starter town is what's just outside of it. Where's that first quest gonna lead? Um, is it the enchanted forest and there's a magical sword there? Um, is it the, is it the cave? <laughs> um, is it the cave and you can hear the capital C? No one goes near the cave at night. Uh, in our case, uh, God, what horrible thing did you guys choose? It's a blood swamp. It is a, um, it is a swamp with a, uh, full of a viscous putrid liquid, uh, not unlike blood, definitely not water, definitely not drinkable. Uh, and underneath the blood swamp are caverns and a dinosaur graveyard. Um, uh, you guys are are terrible monsters, and I and I absolutely love you for it. From there, uh, we started to sort of pull out and sort of think of some whys to all of this. Um, you guys answered the question of who is actually in charge of this region, uh, and the answer you gave. And who's in charge isn't necessarily always the local. Um, elected leaders, right? Even though Portia wasn't necessarily necessarily elected. Uh, sometimes uh, who's actually in charge is just who's actually the most powerful, you know? Um, uh, who, who's the real strength? Uh, in uh, Tombstone, the greatest movie ever made, uh, or at least definitely up there, um, the Cowboys are the real power in town, right? And that's uh, those are the antagonists. That's who Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday have to fight, right? So in our case, the cowboys are, uh, are vampiric gnomes because you guys are insane. Uh, but instead of feasting off blood, they feast off the health of the land. And so that's why, again, this place is so just devoid of any natural resources. Um, uh, so that is pretty much where we, oh, and then Porsche's assistant is three goblins in a trench coat, uh, pretending to be one, uh, one orc. Uh, and I think that is pretty much where we're at. Uh, there's also, uh, you guys drop some bestiaries in there. There's, uh, there's definitely um, uh, a, a, a T-Rex that's been warped by mind flares. And my personal favorite, the Tricera shark, uh, is also stalking around uh, the area a little bit. We're gonna keep building this place out now that we've sort of revisited, we've all reviewed. Uh, I know you guys have been thinking about this place since last I left you, uh, but uh, now we've got it all fresh in our head again. We're gonna jump back into this place. Um, and uh, to do that, we're gonna warm up uh, just a little bit first. Uh, and to do that, we're going to make up, uh, our warm up today is uh, we're gonna make up a dragon name. Uh, so to make up, this dragon name. God, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? 
Um, my first instinct was to for you to pick the uh, the name of the street that you grew up on, but that's also a security question for most passwords, and so that's probably a bad thing to dump into the chat. So um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I want you to drop uh, the name of the model name of your least favorite car. How about that? Uh, I want everyone to, to first drop in the name into chat, the name of your least favorite car. Yeah, no, absolutely. No phishing scams here. Uh, please just give me uh, the name of the street you grew up on and maybe the last four digits of, uh, of your street. Remember your mom's maiden name and then we're going to put together a really cool dragon name. Kidding, please don't do any of those things. Drop in the worst name uh, or the name of your least favorite car. We've got Yugos, we've got Gremlins, we've got Acclaims, we've got Grandams, we've got Omegas. I love this. We've got Tauruses, we have Pintos, we have Neons, we have Yugos. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Our cars are getting, oh, we've got a Chevelle. Chevelles are wonderful. Come on, man. Everybody loves a good Chevelle. Um, here we go. Now what I need from chat is um, I need you guys to put in the name of your absolute most favorite uh, Final Fantasy character. I don't know if this one's going to work so well, but we're going to figure it out. Everybody drop in um, your favorite Final Fantasy character. Cloud, we've got none. Oh, oh, lock, lots of lock, lots of lock love. Riku, Jojo, Waka, love it. Wolfgar, Yuffie, Yuffie or Yuffie? I've never decided. I always go back and forth. Vivi, Vivi is my favorite. I kind of want to get a tattoo of Vivi. I've been thinking about it. Sorry, stay on target, Joe. Lots of cloud. The one with the sword, Cell Sword Virage. I think that's a solid answer, uh, just to be safe. Um, Cell Sword, that reminds me of when I'm at a table talking to people about football, and I'm just like, you know, the guy I really love is the one with the solid tackles, and then usually someone will just fill the name in for me, and I'm like, yeah, it's the guy. Okay, here we go. We dropped in some favorite Final Fantasy names. Now, I, wanted, I want you to figure out, I want you to just smash the car and the name of your favorite Final Fantasy character together, and maybe we'll come up with some cool names uh for our mind flayer t-rex maybe we won't i don't know i don't know if this one's gonna work or not uh i just realized in real time that i was setting you guys up for a fishing scam and i had to, to readjust on the fly um so now we've got oh gosh we've got grand grandum cloud uh ricky pinto <laughs> ricky pinto cloud omega cloud omega sounds cool um cloud omega sounds like a uh a sword that someone's gonna want. We have Nova Sid, Ugarit, uh, <laughs> Proton Cloud, uh, uh, Trevishi, um, Valentine Diablo. I'm writing down Valentine Diablo. I don't know if it's the name of our Mind Flayer T-Rex necessarily, but it's a dope name. So Valentine Diablo is being written down and being used for something um, in the future. Uh, let's see here. We've got uh, the Waka Cleo. We've got the Wolfgar Starbird. Um, I think we're going to name it the uh, the Waka Cleo. Uh, NGC Morph, or no, sorry, uh, 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 <laughs> who named it the, the Yuffris. Um, yeah, I think we're going to call this thing. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Ash Ashflow has the 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 Tar Seraph. Uh, that sounds kind of T Rexus. Um, so we're going to call this weird Mind Flayer T-Rex that's stalking the area, uh, the Taurus Aerith. Um, and that is our big dumb warm up uh, to work on this as a group. So again, if you missed the last VOD, um, I, this, is, this is what I call a writer's room session. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorite things to do is to just put together um, a, a ton of ideas from a ton of different people and force them to fit together. Uh, this is a way that you, you consider things that you never would have even thought of, right? Because even before we started last week, uh, you know, my initial picture of a starter town is a town in the middle of the woods and there's some cabins and, and that's it. And immediately you guys shattered the, completely shattered the assumption of what this place was going to be. 
uh, and you've made this this crazy place that I could have never been creative enough uh, to invent on my own, which I absolutely love. So I'm going to take a quick drink of water because I've been talking nonstop for 20 minutes. And we're going to jump back in uh, to creating we're going to jump back into creating this place together. We're going to jump back into Blood Gorge slash Harmonia Village. Um, and Aaron Laura, yes, keep those giveaways coming. Thank you so much. And then I also saw in the chat we are dropping the link. Uh, I'll do a quick plug before we get started. You want to play Dungeons and Dragons with me and uh, some really amazing people for a really great cause? Uh, of course you do. Jasper's Game Week is coming up. Those auctions are live to to uh, to to get seats at those tables. It's it, it's a cause that's really, really important to me. It, it's suicide prevention, it's mental health awareness. Uh, it impacts everyone. Uh, it impacts you in ways that suicide, you know, and not to bring the room down exactly, uh, but I've also made it my goal to not bring the room down when I talk about this stuff. We've got to normalize being able to talk about it, right? Suicide impacts us in ways that you, we never even considered possible. Uh, uh, people that might not be directly connected to us, losing them still ripples and it still affects you. Uh, it still affects our community. Uh, so this is a, this is the cause that d, d Beyond and myself especially, especially are just really, really proud to be a part of. So make sure you click on those links. And uh, even if you, you're not bidding for my table, uh, some amazing people, Satine Phoenix, uh, uh, Todd's in there, Riley Silverman's in there, some really incredible DMs. So please make sure you, you bid and participate. And if you can't afford to bid i totally get it it's been an insane year so just uh you know at the very least you know spread the word you know sort of help signal boost and and when we really really appreciate it okay all that said let's jump back into this place uh ba -ba 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 -ba. we've done we've talked about our town we've talked about our rulers um here is uh i think this is kind of interesting right um this is uh this is where we can make some decisions about um what's going to happen to a party when they show up in this town i, I think that this kind of kind of be pretty cool um is there a particular uh race of folks whether it's elves whether it's dwarves whether it's tieflings um that the locals here don't like uh, you know, this is, this is the kind of question that, that, you know, is, is super interesting. If you've got two dwarves in your party and, and you pop into a town that, you know, uh, is 20 years shy of a grand war with the dwarves, <laughs> they've got a problem. And we have turtles twice right out the gate. So it's definitely got to be turtles. Um, this place, uh, definitely a lot of problems with the turtles in the past um problems with turtles in past but now we're going to answer the question of why we answered our what but we've got to answer why uh this town has obvious problems with turtles that means there's got to be some turtles in the area um so i'm gonna just this is it's just a big this isn't even a prompt i just want to ask a big wide open question you guys what's up with the turtles in this area and why do the folks in blood gorge hate these turtles why are these folks so pro shredder that's what I want to ask you guys. Why are they so pro Foot Clan in this area uh, that they hate the that they hate turtles? <laughs> Silver says because they eat sheep, and then Iron Clam says that they eat babies. Okay, so the turtles. Okay, so I'm taking. Okay, here we go. Here are those ideas. Um, the turtles, uh, because you guys are 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 horrible, are carnivorous. Uh, so it's uh, the turtles specific to this region are um are carnivorous and maybe a little feral uh maybe there's tribes roaming the area so you guys have made this place even more horrific there are roaming tribes of of feral carnivorous portals <laughs> i absolutely adore this so so much um, so yeah, you guys have made this place even, even worse. And if a player character happens to be playing a turtle and they walk into this place, people might even be freaked out that they're not just immediately like gnawing on someone's leg. So I absolutely love this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Snapper turtles. This is absolutely wonderful. Uh, failed reroll says they tried to build a temple to Gamera. Um, 
I'm going to tell you this. I don't hate this idea. What if these turtles worship, uh, worship a dragon turtle and they're trying to bring it back? Um, which brings one of my absolute favorite monsters into play, uh, which we'll actually be talking a little more uh, about on the website uh, in an article by Jeremy Bloom. He's putting together a really great article for us um, that I thought we were just kind of trying to tie into Godzilla versus Kong and the idea of kaiju. Uh, but you guys have now tied it in to what we're doing right here. So keep an eye out for that one over on dndbeyond.com. And if you're not following Jeremy on Twitter, uh, do so. He's a phenomenally talented guy, and I'm so glad that uh, that he's a part of the family. <laughs> okay, I love this. Uh, so we have we have these roaming tribes of turtles. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, now we're going to dig in uh, to a couple more NPCs uh, in this place. Uh, so I'm going to ask you guys some more prompts. Okay, who is? Uh, I want to know who's the head of the militia of Blood Gorge. So when the worst happens and the turtles raid the town, um, like a scene out of Serenity when the when the Ravagers attack that city, except it's, it's carnivorous turtles. Um, who is the the person um, in charge? Of of uh, of gathering the local militia and rallying defenses and really trying to defend this place. Um, against tribes of ravaging turtles, or you know, if uh, if the if the mind flayer uh, T Rex um, gets a little too familiar and and shows up, who's in charge of uh, of, uh, of of chasing these these folks off? Um, so okay, so let's see here. What are, what are we saying here? Aaron Lore says the mighty Bob. Um, Zach Teflon uh, says just a simple lone dwarf. Uh, Iron Clam says the goldfish Stephen and his bull. Uh, I, uh, Lomar forty two says a grung bard. Oh, that poor grung in this area. My, that's a very dry chapped frogman. Um, by the way, this is my grung uh, that I play. Uh, we have an office game going, and this is my uh, this is my grung. Barbarian. His name is Tapu, and I love him. Um, he's an idiot. Uh, let's see here. We have uh, we have Gamble Sutterfoot. We have a paladin named Kor. Uh, yeah, you know, I take this paladin idea, Silver Val 01, because what if the, maybe this paladin came in um, with Portia the cleric? Same religion, so the two of them both kind of came in together. Maybe they're even siblings. Does that sound cool? Kor and Portia, they're siblings. Uh, so militia head. Core, the paladin. I dig that because um, it, you know, it was a little strange that like Porsche was able to come in single-handedly and kind of like take the place over. So maybe um, had a little help uh, with uh, Core, this paladin. Um, that's their that's their militia. Um, so I I dig that. I dig that a lot. We also have uh, Dust Flip says Sir Bluto, who's this disgraced noble. Um, I, I like this idea. Um, maybe the leader, the leader of the militia formerly before they showed up was this guy, Sir Bluto, and he's just kind of a worthless drunk. He's kind of washed up, um, you know, just a really kind of sad sack <laughs> of a guy. And when they came in, you know, he, he sort of got, you know, stepped over. Uh, still probably acts you know uh like he's he's uh he's in charge of the militia tell me a little more about uh sir bluto you guys uh marquee otero says what if they were twins even yeah they're absolutely twins twins are fun just in general twins are cool uh they've got twin speak is it offensive to to uh assume that twins have twin speak uh i don't know i i've got to ask some twins that the soccer team at my high school had five sets of twins five sets of twins and uh, they're all absurdly fit and handsome, and I hated all of them for it. Um, they were fine. I'm kidding. I didn't hate them. Um, so, okay, so we have, we have Sir Bluto. Uh, Zach Teflon says he has a peg leg. Um, ba -ba -ba. What else about this guy? So, oh, man, he's even sadder. He's not just sort of this guy, this washed-up guy that gave up. He's got this peg leg that sucks. Uh, maybe he uh, he had an encounter with a turtle at some point, uh, trying to defend the town. Maybe that's what started his drinking problem, man. I just made this very very sad. Uh, but you know what? That's important too. Even with your comedy characters, give them something that makes uh, that makes everybody's heart just kind of go out to them and attach to them. Give them like one thing. Uh, Pluto also has gambling debts and and a drinking problem. 
And he's and he's a little gray. Okay, Aaron Laura, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Um, I've accepted it. I've accepted it. I'm an old man. Um, <laughs> Zach says this sounds so depressive, uh, so depressing yet excited. Um, let's see. Yeah, he he eats no greens. Jeff Crute. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of those guys who's just like still not eating vegetables. Just overall, all in all, just not a healthy guy. Not taking care of himself. I absolutely dig that. Um, who is so your party arrives in town, right? They go, they go to the inn. Um, there's two key stores that we need. Uh, and we need a, um, we need like a weapon and armor store. Right. And because this area is just out in the middle of nowhere, whoever's making that stuff is probably making it on site and they're on their own. So it's probably like a blacksmith sort of all encompassing place uh, where they're making everything there. And we need an arc, uh, you know, a shop of the arcane. Right. Uh, but uh, let's start with our weapon and armor store, uh, which is probably also the general store. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe you guys tell me what's this place called? What's uh, what's what's uh, what's our uh, what's our weapon shop called out here um, is our big, big question. Uh, let's hear Volkibin says Zach Bastion, the Furbolg. Uh, is a is a is a blacksmith. Okay, I like Zach the. Fur you guys have been suggesting furbolgs a lot, so I think Zach the furbolg. Furbolgs need to happen. It's it's come up a lot, and that's the universe telling me that the writers' room wants a furbolg. So, uh, Z Z A K Zach the furbolg is is the one uh, running this place. He probably makes everything um, on site. He calls it the. I, I like the smash and grab. That's kind of fun. Um, uh, uh, Declasser, I, I dig, I dig the smash and grab. Um, because maybe even uh, a lot of this stuff is scavenged. Maybe a lot of it is stolen. Maybe a lot of it's not even on the up and up. Maybe like Zach and Granny Rex have an arrangement where if there's caravans or travelers or something like that, maybe something happens to them at night uh when they think they're safe at the uh at the sulfur spring and all their stuff gets taken and they uh i don't know they get dumped into the blood swamps uh so you know a lot of the stuff he might not even be making uh there's there's a finite amount of natural resources after all in the area probably not enough to just you know be making a dozen short swords a day right um so i dig that okay the smash and grab and that's a cool fun thing right like what's in a name uh, when I'm creating, you guys, I always like to, um, I always like to make my job a little easier, right? So if naming a store can also tell me a little bit about it, uh, two birds with one stone, right? Smash and Grab is not only a cool name, but it also tells me ex pretty much everything I need to know about the place, and it gives me some ideas for adventure hooks too. Um, if if now I know that if the party does spend the night at the inn uh someone's going to try to rob them uh and take all their stuff to the smash and grab so that's actually super super fun um yeah zach I, yeah i love the idea maybe to start the start this place he stumbled across just like a huge stash of weapons and and was like yes i made these i absolutely 100 percent made these uh he might even you know at, at his anvil try to like you know uh smash in you know a uh, a maker's mark on everybody's stuff that's kind of fun I dig that. That's a super, super fun idea. Again, I love doing stuff like this. You guys just kick off all of these ideas I, I absolutely never would have thought of. Um, and make things really just weird. Uh, sometimes a weakness that I think I have, uh, and some of you guys might share it with me, is that I don't push fantasy far enough sometimes in my head. Um, cause I love crazy fantasy, like give me heavy metal, give me Warhammer age of Sigmar, um, you know, give me Eberron, uh, give me just crazy, really just like out there fantasy settings. And, and sometimes my head just won't get there. Uh, so in a situation like this, where you guys are sort of just throwing bonkers patterns together that my head wouldn't have made myself. Like you just get such fun stuff that really kind of like pushes the, the pushing the boundary sounds a little pretentious, but really, you know, at least for me, like pushes the boundaries of what fantasy is and what, and what it can be. So I really, really dig, I really dig that. Um, so let's see here. Uh, the other place we need is uh, we need 
uh, the arcane place. So what is, uh, and before we start answering, you know, I, I kind of want to, I want to set the scene, right? Like we have this hellhole of a town. It's in the middle of nowhere. The people that live here live here because they have absolutely no other choice. Uh, maybe they're on the run. Maybe they are, you know, maybe there's a family that's like disgraced nobles and this is where they came to survive. And they, you know, they have, uh, um, you know, secret identities. And um, maybe some of these people are surviving members of parties that have come here before that somehow got out of just being murked in their sleep. And now they're just here. Now they just live here. Uh, you know, maybe folks just, you know, in the long trek across the desert got this far and were like, well, that sucked and I don't want to do it again. Meh, we'll stay here. Sure, there's a Mind Flayer T-Rex, but it's better than crossing the desert again. So we have this just dead end hell hole that no one would ever want to visit. But we also have a magic shop in it. What kind of magic user sets up shop, puts down roots in a place like this? So I want to I want to start with him before we kind of get into the actual shop. Like, because I, I feel like this is an opportunity to have like just a really cool, weird, unique magic user. Like, what is it about this area uh that that attracted this guy uh or gal or whatever? Um, you know, what 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 are they doing here? Um we have uh, uh let's see here. Um uh Das Flips uh, has suggested like a sort of a chaos uh sorcerer unnamed has suggested like a, a a wild magic uh sorcerer in this place um let's see here um an albino lizard folk shaman super cow um let's start uh, okay yeah that that goes on the list that uh, okay so our wizard is um this albino lizard folk And they call themselves a shaman, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a druid. Maybe um, with their crew where they grew up, shamans are just what they call magic users. Uh, and for whatever reason, he left. Uh, he left his tribe. He left his. He left his town. He left his family unit. Um, uh, he is. Let's see here. Yeah, it was. Oh, Aaron, Laura, I really dig that idea that maybe they were running out. Of, they were run out of town for uh, for pushing the boundaries a little bit too much. Maybe doing something that they should uh, not have been doing. Uh, a couple people have suggested a warlock, an exiled warlock, uh, for some reason, which I totally dig. Um, okay, so this is a warlock. Well, sorry, let me back up. Uh, a lizard folk shaman, uh, which for their people is just the general term for magic user they were driven out right for for some reason so let's let's just start connecting dots they were driven out because they accepted this pact for more power um so whatever it is they accepted a pact with is not uh is not a great thing right uh so let's let's figure out uh what that pact is um uh uh uh, uh painful ziana says the pact of genie I'm gonna put it in because I've never messed with the Pact of Genie that much. I've never uh, had an NPC that had a Pact of Genie. I've never played a character that used the Pact of Genie. Uh, so let's do it. Um, he, he's uh, so Pact of Genie, and then um, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, Lomar42 said he's hiding from his patron. I love this idea. Somewhere out in the desert, hiding from patrons. Somewhere out in the desert. There is a very pissed off genie hunting this guy down. Um, I love this. Uh, so then maybe if they are hiding from this genie, there's not even a storefront officially for this place. Maybe just in one of the attached caves or something like that in town. Um, this guy is just laying low, but he's still got to make a living, right? So yeah, he, he sells, you know, magical wares and, and things like that, uh, that he's created. That is a super fun idea. Yeah, uh, the Zark says their shop always looks closed. Yeah, they just live in like this ran. It doesn't maybe it doesn't even look like a shop, much less one that's open. Uh, uh, but it has a reputation. If you ask around enough, people are like, "Yeah, you want magic stuff? Uh, you, you you head over there." 
uh, and talk to uh, you, you talk to that weirdo uh, that doesn't want to be uh, that doesn't want to be found and doesn't want to be talked to at all. Um, I absolutely dig that. Uh, oh, that's an interesting idea. Where Tosama says maybe someone runs the shop. So actually, you know, publicly sort of presents themselves as like, yes, 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 I'm, I, I'm in charge of all this arcana and, and, and I'm the, the local expert, but really uh, this, uh, this lizard folk who's just trying to stay low and hide from their patron is in the back uh, doing all the hard work. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I absolutely, yeah, I, I, I very, very, very dig this idea. Um, so who, who's, who's in the front? Because they, they are probably like the exact opposite. They're probably very like showmany and like, hey, welcome to my store and just making some money off of this person. Just they're a parasite that's making money off of this poor guy that's hiding um, from his patron. Which I, which I absolutely dig. That's super, super fun. Uh, Silver Valo one says, uh, their name is Josiah. Uh, I'm always down to put a Josiah in a game. That's a, that's a, and you know, Josiah sounds kind of Western-y, right? And this is, I feel like this place kind of has a Western vibe. Maybe, I don't know, um, uh, Magnificent Seven by way of Mad Max Fury Road in a way. Uh, definitely a really, really strange, strange place. So I absolutely dig this. Um, uh, yeah, Josiah is super buff. Um, she's just sort of this wall of a lady, uh, which is even funnier. She's clearly like, you know, a brawler. Um, definitely, clearly like not a mage, but presents herself as one. Maybe she even just has like a big goofy like wizard's hat on and it's just like, yeah, me, I'm the wizard. Um, and she uh, she physically intimidates this poor little guy uh, into doing her bidding. You guys keep making the most sad and tragic location, and I absolutely love you for it. Uh, let's see here. What is one thing that we can kind of end on as we continue to build Blood Gorge? Uh, <laughs> what is... Um, hmm. So last week, we we discovered that the the, um, the, the folks really really truly running the place are the gnomes, these vampiric gnomes. Um, the last question I wanna ask you guys, and I think this question has to connect to the gnomes because like, why are the gnomes here? What do they want? Why do they keep feeding off the land? What is the secret of this region that nobody else knows? But may, except for maybe the gnomes, like what is the big secret of this area? I think it has to tie into the reason why they are feeding off the health of the area, why they've made the place desolate, um, why they're here at all. And maybe it's even what made them vampires to begin with. Maybe these gnomes came to do something completely different a long, long time ago. And whatever the secret is has turned them into uh, these vampires. Uh, so let's figure out, okay, so the secret is, let's see here, Munch, Munch, Munch um, has kicked off with blood gems. So we're going to use these blood gems as a starting point. And now let's just yes and the heck out of this. So uh, we have these blood gems. I'm trying to figure out like what they do. What is it about these blood gems that, um, that, that did this to these gnomes uh, that really... <laughs> <laughs> Gordy Glasgow just said hemogoblins, hemo and that is uh, maybe the best pun I've heard this week. You win best pun award for today's stream. Congratulations. I'm very, very proud of you. Um, but what do we do? What do we do? Uh, what, what are the, not, what do we do? What do these blood gems do? I want to, I would, besides tasting like coffee, which is probably why the gnomes uh, fell into their trap to begin with. They're like, oh, maybe we can make, nope, we're vampires now. Uh, we're caffeinated vampires. Um, but, uh, oh, I, I dig that. Aaron Lohr says they're the blood of an elder god that has been crystallized. Blood of an elder god that's been crystallized. Someone mentioned a titan earlier, too. Maybe there's a titan buried underground, and I think these tie in together really, really well. Um, so they are from the blood of an elder god that's been crystallized. They've turned these poor gnomes uh, who coveted them and maybe discovered them accidentally mining like a long, long time ago into these horrible, horrible vampire things. Um, 
And just like that, with figuring out what the secret of this area is, I think you guys have also unlocked what the end game of this place is. Like, you've been you've been doing stuff in this town. You've gained a couple levels. You've fought a couple Tricera sharks. Uh, you've been you know you've encountered Granny Rex. Uh, you've freed this poor lizard guy uh, from the tyranny of Josiah of Josiah. Uh, but what's the end game? Now you guys have this big end game that this area and the areas around it, you know, can actually build up to. There's a, there's a dead elder god that at some point, this titan, that at some point, a zillion years beforehand, maybe fell in battle. And uh, their, their actual essence, their, their organs, their pieces, their parts, their blood has been crystallized and turned into diamonds. Just like, you know, immense pressure turns a piece of coal into a diamond. What would immense pressure do to that Titan, that elder God Titan? Um, uh, one thing it would do would do these, uh, would make these blood gems that have clearly had just even these simple blood gems have had this horrible effect on this area. Uh, but then if that's all the blood gems do and they've done this much damage, they've caused this much problem, they've caused this much strife and blight what does this thing's heart do? I think that's a really cool question that you guys have forced us to ask. And I think that's a cool place uh, uh, to end this stream. I think that's super, super fun. We're gonna keep coming back to this place. We're gonna keep building it up together. Uh, thank you guys so, so much for participating. Uh, someone mentioned in chat uh, a little earlier that this felt like its own domain of dread. It might. It might be, uh, you know, even if you drop this uh, somewhere on the map in the Forgotten Realms, it's definitely a, you know, a dreadful, horrific, awful place to go and to get stuck in. Um, and that's your fault. You guys made it this way. Um, but then, you know, obviously speaking of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, it's available for pre-order right now on the D&D Beyond Marketplace. Uh, I got to do my selly part, you guys. You know I have to. Uh, it's going to come with all sorts of pre-order perks. Uh, including some really, really cool dice. And I, I've been overhearing the team sort of talk about like what the, the theme and the idea behind the dice. And I can't talk about it yet. I can't spoil that for them. Uh, well, I'm pretty pumped about them. I think they're going to be really, really cool. Uh, so those will be available uh, with pre-orders of the book. Um, uh, we'll see you guys Thursday morning, bright and early for the dev update. Uh, next week's dev, uh, this upcoming dev update, uh, we're going to be talking about some subscriber perks uh, that are going to start coming with uh, subscriptions. Uh, our good uh, our good buddy over at D&D, um, Bart, is going to be on talking about those a little bit. And then the following week, um, Aunt Peg, who is not like, like Anthony Peg, sorry, not like my Aunt Peg, uh, not my sister's mom, but Anthony Peg, um, is, uh, who is um, one of our absolute, uh, you know, up top product heads that's going to be coming on to sort of talk about the roadmap forward uh, for DDB. And, uh, you know, sort of what he he sort of calls like a, a, a new phase uh, is going to be sort of coming on to not sort of coming on. He is absolutely coming on to talk about that, but to also do a, a Q&A with you guys. So that's going to be super, super cool. Uh, so I know a lot of larger questions and bigger questions that a lot of you guys have had about features and why does this do what it does and when will this happen and stuff like that. I think he'll have some pretty cool answers uh, for a lot of that. So make sure you come check that out as well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, bid on Jasper's game day if you can. If you can't, I totally get it. Please help us boost the signal uh, for that charity and for Jasper's game week. Um, and then tune into those games. Uh, go to the Jasper's game week website uh, or Jasper's game day website, uh, which you can just find on Google. Uh, uh, I don't want my mods to have to scramble <laughs> to find all the appropriate links that I'm throwing at you guys right now. Just Google Jasper's game day and uh, you can see the Jasper's game week schedule. It's insane. It, it, it's absolutely crazy. It's like um, if if you are into Dungeons and Dragons, if you are into tabletop games uh, and you are a fan of any personalities online that play these things, chances are they are running a game at Jasper's Game Week. It's 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 nerdy Woodstock. Um, you know, it, it's going to be so, so fun and, and so, so cool. So make sure you're checking those out and supporting um, such a really, really fantastic phenomenal cause uh and in the meantime until i see you guys again take care of each other be nice to each other 
and we'll see you guys next time at D&D Beyond. Thanks, everybody. Ha, ha, ha.